everybody. Uh, thank you for coming here. It's really nice to see so many Marmiko friends here. I can even see some Marmiko dresses here, which is always nice. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I will tell a little bit first about the history of Marimekko, uh, the way how we do things, about the design process, and then about my own personal way of uh, designing products, how I work, where I get my inspiration, and uh, I will show a few cases then later with the that I have been doing for Marimekko and with other companies as well. Uh, yeah, Marimekko was... Uh, Marimekko has a long history. Uh, the name Marimekko uh, can be divided in two parts. Mari is a girl's name, really typical Finnish girl's name. And uh, Mekko is dress. So it's Mari's dress, basically. It's a clever name with double meaning. Uh, when Marimekko started uh, in early 50s, uh, it was a post-war time in Finland. Uh, it was really grey, there was nothing, uh, the country was really poor. It's a small country with only 5 million people. And uh, the uh, creator of Marimekko had a clever idea. Uh, her husband, uh, Vilio, uh, owned a textile company, a printing company, uh, which was going to be bankrupt. And um, she had this idea that she will uh, hire uh, young artists to come there to make prints for textile and uh, later on clothing. Uh, there was no import in those times. Uh, the only clothes were made in Finland. There was no colors, no prints. It was all gray. Uh, and then she had a first fashion show. Uh, this is from 51. Uh, the feeling there was really joyful even, even though the time wasn't that good. But uh, she wanted to bring something something else to people. And here is a dress from the first fashion show. You can see the pattern is, uh, uh, you can see the handmade feeling there. Uh, the design is really special. Uh, it's not, uh, it's completely made by hand and um, it's the iconic thing that we, ha we still have in our prints even today. You can see the feeling there, the uh, imperfection there. Uh, when we talk about Marimekko, we don't talk about the uh, brand, we talk about company or personality. And uh, uh, people really love Marimekko. Uh, they all have their own uh, feelings about Marimekko Finns, especially uh, every Finn has grown with Marimekko basically since it was started. Uh, Marimekko, some people can see it as a bold company, like bold prints. Uh, there is, uh, you can see it as a joyful. Uh, 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 really colorful one and iconic. And uh, this is a picture that when, uh, from the times when Jacqueline Kennedy bought six Marimekko dresses uh, at the same time to help her, uh, her husband's campaign. Those times, uh, quite often people were uh, in better families buying things from European fashion houses, like uh, expensive ones, and uh, people didn't like about that idea that the first lady is having that kind of dresses. She was clever and bought from tiny, tiny uh, Finnish company these uh, cotton dresses, really simple A-line dresses, and used those. Uh, and since that, Marimekko has had these iconic women wearing Marimekko dresses all the time, so it's a, a house of pow powerful women. Uh, we have lines for kids, adults, for elderly people, and it's uh, designed for everyday life. There's one picture that I think uh, somehow shows the ideology really well. There's a grey uh, sky behind the really colourful patterns, but they somehow they really fit there and they show a piece of everyday life. And this is a quote from uh, founder Armi Ratia. And somehow I really love this thing that she said in the early days, to be present in everyday lives of people and make their secret dreams come true, no more, no less. 
that's my vision for Maramiko's future. And it's still something that is alive also today. Marimekko fits really well in every situation, in people's houses, different kind of interiors, uh, outdoor life. Uh, there is three main things in Marimekko design that you can always find. It's color, pattern, and shapes. And together, those three things makes Marimekko so special and Marimekko design. You can always find those three things from our collections at the same time. Uh, then about the design language, uh, Marimekko is at the same time, it's graphical, playful, and organic. Those three things can be found also in every collection. It has been like that since the beginning of Marimekko. And the most interesting part will, uh, you can find from the kind of like cross-section of those three things. It's never the, just the one, one of those words, but those three together makes it interesting. How we use different elements, uh, graphic things together with organic, uh, joyful, and playful together with uh, graphic things. So it's the mixture of these things and uh, kind of a thin line between these. Uh, there are three lines, three product lines that we have. We have an interior for your homes. Uh, then fashion that you, can be, uh, that you can use in your everyday life. And then, uh, oops, uh, the bags and accessories. And all these three lines, they come together in, uh, in our shops, in meeting places where you can come and see the whole, whole Marimekko world. And this is from New York, uh, our flagship store there in Fifth Avenue. And here is a little video about the fashion shows where you can see really well these different themes working together. This is from Finland. And this is the annual uh, fashion show that we have every year in the park in the middle of Helsinki, our capital. We want to bring people together with the company. So as you see, it's a free, uh, free for all the people to come and see. This is Tokyo. first show in Tokyo a few years back. And this is from Shanghai from last year. We had a fashion show there before we even had a shop there. We wanted to show people first Marimekko before opening the shop there. Again, this fashion show is uh, it's in the middle of the People's Park in Shanghai and it was the very first time any uh, company was allowed to have a fashion show of outdoor place in Shanghai. And this is New York from last year.
Uh, and then about our design team and how 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 we work together. Uh, this is actually a picture of most of the people in our design team. There is a group of 10 people approximately. Uh, artistic director, a few in-house designers on one of them, and then uh, design directors. And we are together having meetings uh, and uh, building the collection slowly. And here in this picture you can see also our designers. There's approximately 20 designers that we use per year for different collections, for interior and uh, clothing. Uh, and uh, in this picture, our creative director wanted to bring us in a place. Uh, it's outside of, uh, in an archipelago, outside of Helsinki. It's an old island uh, where it's the lighthouse that it's not in use anymore. It's an island where it lives only few people anymore. And uh, she wanted to take us there to get inspired about the something totally different than city life. So sometimes we are doing these kind of trips to somewhere and uh, visiting different places together. Uh, what is so special in Marimekko is that we all work in, uh, on the same roof. There is uh, one building in Hertoniemi and there is approximately 130 people working there. We have sales department there, uh, marketing, design, uh, even the production lines are there. So we're all working in the same building on the same roof together. It's almost like a little family working together. Everyone knows each other and uh, uh, there is no roles. We are not using titles. It's like really almost family type of working together. Uh, here is a picture of uh, one of our fashion designers working with his team, pattern cutting ladies, assistants. Then the interior side, uh, one of our most famous young designers, Ainomaya Metsola, is searching for their perfect colors here. It's from our color kitchen, where designers can go and inspire about the colors and find the perfect tones for their own fabrics. Then we have this amazing artwork studio where all the magic is happening. So basically, when the designers are um, making the designs ready, they go to artwork studio and they make the final drawings. And uh, there are six designers working there and making the dreams come true. Then the heart of Marimekko printing mill, it's under the same roof as well. We're gonna go there, uh, ask the professionals how they print things. Uh, if there's any problems with those, we can do test printings. Uh, people mixing color there. Here you can see Marimekko colors. It's a really physical thing, the printing process. So there are strong men. Some have been working there even 20, 30 years. And then the final fabric is ready and uh, ready for use. Then about me as a designer and how I work, I wanted to give you a really like um, personal look to my career and what I'm be doing in Marimekko. I'm starting with this picture because uh, this is a special meaning. It has a special meaning for me. Uh, when I was a kid, we didn't have any Marimekko in our home. Almost every single family in, uh, in Finland has some Marimekko. We didn't have, I don't know why. Uh, I didn't need it then. I, did, I even didn't know about the company. It was almost the high school times when I got uh, somehow impressed about some Marimekko things that I saw somewhere. Uh, in those times, I was, I was living in uh, Savonlinna. I was studying in art high school. My friends were using even striped shirts and uh, Marimekko clothes. And then they opened the first shop in uh, Savonlinna that was selling uh, Marimekko. And I went there quite often to see those prints. I really remember the first print that I saw there. Uh, in high school times, I was living alone there. I didn't have any money, I couldn't buy any Marimekko, but I decided that one day I will have something, maybe. Uh, three years later, I was graduating from high school, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I had been uh, studying art there mostly, uh, but my teacher was clever enough to tell me that there could be something else, that you can do many things with your hands, and uh, maybe you should apply to University of Art and Design Helsinki. And next autumn I started there, uh, 
specializing in ceramics and glass design. And uh, then after I started there, after three years in university, I wanted to learn something about more about textiles, some other materials. So uh, I decided to do it a little bit differently. I called to Marimekko uh, that I don't know anything about the industry. I don't know anything about the materials, but I would be really eager to learn that it kind of come there. And uh, half a year calling back and forth. And uh, finally, they told me that you shouldn't call us anymore, that we remember you now. And a uh, month after that, I started there as a trainee. Uh, and three months after I started as a trainee, they asked me to stay there. Then I was studying uh, at the same time, five years, doing other projects, going abroad. I was traveling a lot, but then uh, whenever I did some project ready somewhere, I was living a short time in Japan and uh, <clears throat> working for other iconic Finnish company, Itala and Arabia. Uh, I always came back to Marimekko the next day. I don't even know how they allowed me to go there, but it happened. Every single time when the project was ready, I went back there. It felt like home. And then after graduation in 2005, I went there. Uh, I went working there daily. And uh, 2007, I started as a designer. And now, more than 10 years later, I'm here in this picture working in my studio in Marimekko. Uh, the main design work I do at home Normally at the evenings, night times, it's the best time for me to work. Uh, I'm working here since all the important material, like uh, all the inspirational things are there. So I spend most of the time then at home. And then uh, after hard, hard work at night, uh, I go in the morning to Marimekko and I show the things for design team. And then we continue from that. But home is for me the place where to inspire. I love art books. I'm still really obsessed with art when I start working with design. Uh, I'm collecting art myself, so all these personal things are working there. Uh, my sketchbooks. I'm working in a little bit more traditional way, like old fashioned way. I'm sketching a lot. I'm drawing all the time. Probably it's because I used to draw in a when I was doing art mostly. Uh, so I'm drawing and drawing and drawing. I have this bad habit of having these tens of sketchbooks at the same time. I'm doing really tiny drawings. They can be like stamp size like this. No one else can read those except me, but it works that way. And when finally the idea is more ready, I'm making more detailed drawings, prototyping. But I have to be really sure what I'm doing before uh, starting to work with computer. Then uh, another inspirational thing for me is photographing. I'm doing that a lot. And uh, this picture that you can see here is my color palette for uh, Spring 14. Our artistic director asked us to bring to a meeting. We have meetings with the designers four times per year when we are starting a new season. She asked me to bring three, a good, uh, three colors or three nice pictures. And this was my three pictures. I couldn't do it, but I made a whole color palette out of my photos. Colors, like here, I was really inspired of red colors, greens, different blues, uh, pastels. And this was really interesting, because when I was collecting these six pictures together, I realized that they had been taken uh, during the time of half, year, half a year. And uh, there's a picture from Germany, France, Italy, Helsinki, and Estonia. And uh, it's funny because I had been, without any meaning, I had took this similar kind of feelings there and collected uh, this black and white graphic look together. A picture of the materials that I'm working with, it's from my studio. I'm now working with um, ceramics, textiles, paper, and wood. And from those, I make products. I'm a product designer, not printmaker, at least not yet. Uh, this uh, 
a project that I did when I, a company asked me to design a special stationary line for them. It was a brand new thing. We didn't have any stationary before. Uh, and it's always challenging to, since Marimekko is print house, and it's known all about uh, of its prints, to figure out what kind of shape Marimekko would be if Marimekko is a shape. Uh, so I started with the really iconic uh, prints and used those as the details. Uh, there are little pockets inside with the fabric trimmings. Uh, small details like stitchings, color stitchings, uh, effect colors inside of the products. Uh, I wanted to make something that when people use these, they will find new things all the time. So when they are opening, there are small details inside as well. Sometimes it's all about prints, like here, about solid colors. I think that these really classic Marimiko colors, bright red, dark blue, black and white, and yellow, uh, they are needed in Marimiko collections to somehow calm down the amount of prints sometimes. Uh, collaboration I did with Vuokko uh, Eskoli Nurmesniemi, who is the first Marimiko designer. Uh, from 50s, and this design is actually from the 50s. And it was really nice. Uh, it shows somehow the way how I'm working with old designers as well. Since I have been working in the beginning when I started in Marimekko, assisting many of the old designers. So I know the background really well, and Marimekko history is really important for me. I see my role also as a person who is carrying this legacy. And because uh, they told me so many stories before they left company, so it's my responsibility to tell the stories now to younger people and help them, the younger designers who are coming nowadays to Marimekko, to tell about the past. And in this case, I was able to work with Wok. And uh, even though she's more than 80 years old, she was really eager to come to visit me. And we did uh, planning together how we can make this really wide, stripy pattern in my own ceramics. So we had to scale it a bit. and. Uh, we started actually with the picture that you see here in the, the page of book that can be seen here. That was the picture that we had about the fabric, and we started with that. Uh, yes, I mentioned I'm doing product design mostly, so I'm uh, com combining the other designers' prints together with my own shapes. And it's a really important role somehow, and I, I feel that I have to respect a lot the prints, you can't cut these prints like you want. You have to be really sure what you are doing. And uh, here you can see some uh, textile products from last spring that we did together with Maya Lowekkari, one of the young designers. There are lots of details, metal rings, uh, stitchings, solid colors. Uh, the pillows are made with quilt technique. Uh, color palette that I'm working with daily. This is uh, for ceramic colors, really nice solid colors. The palette is not that big, but together these colors make something amazing. Then one picture from 60s that I selected here, because I think that this shows the whole soul of Marimekko uh, from my perspective. Uh, in Marimekko, we want to bring people around the table, gather there, almost as a family. You can find there all the important things that you need. There's the textiles, clothing, there's the food, uh, dishes, even furniture. And this is something that I'm doing in my own life as well. I'm, uh, I want to gather people, people in certain places and discuss with them about my own products. I want to learn from them, the end users. Uh, actually, the first owner of Marimekko is sitting there in the end of the table in pink dress. She's Armiratia. And I'm continuing this in my own life as well. This is from last summer. I asked my friends to come to spend uh, midsummer with me and I made food for them. And cooking is a big thing for me. Uh, before I knew that I want to be a designer, I wanted to be uh, my first dream job when I was a kid was a baker or chef. And uh, then later on, I realized that I can combine like things that I really love, food and cooking, uh, to, my, to the work that I'm doing nowadays. 
I can uh, try different things. Uh, I can try my own prototypes. I'm learning when I'm using those. Uh, I'm relaxing when I'm cooking. I'm getting new ideas for dishes. Uh, ceramics are a really big thing for me, so uh, I'm taking pictures at the same time. Since I'm doing also the photo shootings for Marenko pictures, I'm trying here different, different things. I'm carrying all the time Marenko fabrics with me. People are sometimes annoyed when I'm taking these pictures, but I don't care. Here I can try different things and make beautiful combinations. And this is from my own home. I tried my own prototypes. I wanted to learn how they really work before I bring those to other markets. And then about my work with, two, uh, with other designers, there's two projects. This is the first design project that I did uh, with my yellow Kari. And actually, this is the first design project that I did for Marimekko. Uh, the year was 2008. I had start, just started as a designer there. And uh, the company asked me to make a new product line, uh, ceramics for them. The Oiva uh, was born in that year. Uh, uh, the brief from Marimekko was really simple. It was really Marimekko way of saying it. There was only one A4 paper and a few lines. Like we would like to have something for eating and drinking, something for hot drinks, cold drinks, and basically that's it. Normally, quite often when companies are uh, giving these briefs, they are really precise, all the sizes, amount of items. This time, it was only freedom to do what I wanted. Uh, at the same time, it was amazing, but scary as well, because this was, this was one of the first times when uh, I did the whole ceramic line, and uh, I had to really think about what kind of shape Marimekko would be then. And uh, I told my boss that it's quite difficult to work with these lines, so she gave me that picture, the biggest picture that you can see there, with a uh, few plates and a uh, bottle. This is all you need, this picture. There you can see all the things that are important. I was like, okay, thank you very much. It didn't help that much, <laughs> but at least I had a nice picture there. And then uh, I, I collected old Marinko photos together and started from that, from the ideas. Lots of measuring. I'm doing that all the time. The, the work uh, before the actual design is uh, maybe the most interesting thing for me. I'm learning all the time when I'm drawing different things in different places. I'm, uh, I'm the one in restaurant who is always turning the uh, plate upside down and checking who has made it. And uh, I'm measuring with, uh, with my hands the, all the items and I'm trying different handles. And it's an it's annoying habit, but I, that's the way I'm working. And I'm making these little notes all the time. Uh, and then uh, I'm starting to sketch, like here final drawing, and then finally this is the end result. It's the pure white oiva, as I want it to be. So it's a really simple uh, tableware set with lots of space for prints. And that was one of the things that we discussed in the beginning, that there should be a space for a print uh, in these items, and they should be really working well as a background for beautiful prints that we have. Uh, but at the same time, the shapes has to be so strong that they can survive without prints as well. Then came Maya Loekkari. Uh, she was so happy to work with this project because she was the first designer who saw the pure white samples that we had, the first prototypes. She was able to touch those feel them. I gave those uh, to her so that she was able to take those at home, try those, feel how, how she liked those, and uh, learn about the shapes before starting making the patterns for them. So not just cutting the pattern randomly, but she drew for every single item uh, its own uh, independent print. And uh, here you can see the first ideas that she had, uh, let me see, in the left corner. Uh, we discussed a lot about her idea. She 
she had then uh, been really interested about the small gardens that we have in Helsinki. We have these colonial gardens, uh, little plants that, uh, little piece of land that people can have there with the little uh, house, and they can grow their own vegetables there and uh, have their own garden there. And uh, she made a beautiful story of uh, her uh, biking through the city to the to her own garden, and uh, in some parts, some items you can see these uh, city houses, and then later on they they turned uh, to be the garden pictures with the flowers and beautiful things growing there. And as I mentioned, every single item is different. So there is uh, nowadays I think 15 different items in this set, and every single one has their own uh, decoration. And then in the end with pictures, and uh, I think that this picture shows really well the idea that we have in Marimekko. It's a little bit crazy thing. No one carries like that on a tray. Uh, but I love it somehow because we do things differently and that's exactly how I would do it as well. It shows the fresh uh, summer days that we wanted to bring to people's life. And then another collection is the weather diary uh, from uh, previous autumn. It's one of the most beautiful collections that I have been working with in the history uh, that I have been working in Marimekko. Uh, it all started two years ago when uh, there was lots of things going on in Finland with the weather. There was uh, big storms and we didn't know what is going on. Uh, we came back from Christmas holiday and we discussed uh, together with the design team that there is something weird going on, like storms and uh, really rainy days and uh, the weather looked really weird. And from those discussions we decided that, okay, why don't we do a collection of different weathers? And like uh, in Finland we have this winter, summer, autumn and spring. And the weather is totally different in every season, so we wanted to bring that seasonal look into these items. And we asked Aino Maja Metsola uh, to come to visit us. And we told her about our ideas. And she brought these beautiful pictures. Uh, she's living in a, a tiny island in Helsinki. And she's taking lots of pictures there. So she, she's living quite, it's a little village type of uh, island. Uh, and I think that there's like 500 people living there. And she's also sailing a lot in Finnish archipelago. So she had these beautiful, beautiful pictures of different weathers. And uh, we're discussing how beautiful it is also in the rainy days. And uh, you know, after rain, there is always beautiful days. So you can find, if you want, these really simple, beautiful day things from everyday life as well. And after that meeting, she brought us these beautiful sketches. There was a pie like huge piles, like hundreds of these pictures that she brought. There's an island with uh, this rocky island with the dry grass. Uh, different kind of rains. And she attached these prints to my ceramics. And uh, when I saw those finally, I couldn't have been any happier. I was so proud of the work that she had done. Because also, in the beginning, we discussed a lot about the shapes and the meaning of uh, the combination of print and shape together. Uh, what's the best way to attach, attach these beautiful pictures there and how she used the uh, shape as part of the decoration as well. There's rain. And this is called Harmaya. She gave the names of their islands in Helsinki or in Finnish archipelago to these fabrics. It's a, yeah, that's a misty morning, for example. Then there's the heavy rain, and the beautiful, beautiful plate with the uh, uh, sky.
and the technique is really difficult. Uh, she's a master of watercolors, so we wanted to make it as perfect as possible, and it took quite a long time to make these final items ready. And then the pictures. Uh, since I'm taking the pictures, I wanted to bring the beauty of the collection and uh, at the same time show the strong weather that we can have sometimes. So these are taken just before uh, the first snow. I think on the next day from this day, uh, there was a snow on the ground. So these are the last autumn days that we can have. And I think that especially in this picture, you can really see the power of the nature. And then on the last part, I'm talking about the project that I did uh, with iconic, other iconic Finnish company, Finnair. Uh, this is the biggest, like physically also, the biggest project that I've been doing in Marimikko years. Uh, in the beginning, I didn't know what why I was asked to come to meet them when I went on a first meeting with design team. Uh, I went there and uh, uh, we were just discussing, they told that they like my ceramics and the things that they had seen before. Uh, I thought that it's only going to be the business class ceramics or something, but later on I realized that it's the whole interior and exterior as well. So. Here are some of my sketches for interior. We discussed a lot about the feeling inside of the plane. Uh, it should be really peaceful there. Uh, the whole flying experience should be as peaceful as possible. And when you start to design for an uh, airline company, everything has to be really stackable. Really, uh, there is lots of, there is not that much space there. So, and uh, pieces have to be really uh, light as well. My first sketch is for the Finnair plane. As you see, they are quite funny looking. But in the end, uh, we worked together with them to make it true. I used Isola family's prints in here, the most iconic print outside the plane, and then some recognizable but not uh, maybe the most used prints inside. This from the, I made a prototypes myself, first ones, 3D model and I stacked the, or glued the papers there. And then they finally made the last modeling because uh, there was no point for mistakes in this case. When you're painting a plane, you can do it only once. There is like no uh, second chances to make it. And you, you can believe when the flower is like four meter wide, it's a big thing to paint. Uh, the shapes are kind of right. I told them that they are the brother of Oiva. Somehow they are starting from the same starting point or from the same shapes, but I made those to be used in, uh, in business class, so they're a little bit different, but you can find some similarities there. And this is the variety of the materials that I was working with. So there are from the menus and from the paper products and disposables for economy side till the textiles and ceramics in business side. And what was maybe the most important thing for me in the beginning, I told them that I would like to really do it so that the whole plane can enjoy the same things. Every single person who is going there, like from the first moment when they went uh, in the plane till the last moment when they are leaving, they should have the same things there, like both economy and uh, business side. So the difference in is in materials. The prints are similar, and even the colors are almost similar, but the materials are the only difference. But somehow I wanted to bring every single person who is going on a plane the same feeling. And it's the, the Scandinavian uh, democratic feeling that I wanted to have there. Because I think that Finnair is, anyway, one of the most iconic companies. and a few pictures of inside of the plane. And these are from uh, economy side and the first pictures were business side. And then I will end my presentation with this video from Finnair.
There's few things that you can always see and find from Marimeco design. Shape, colors and patterns. Those are basically three things that always has been and will be there. It's timeless, it's simple, but bold at the same time. It's something that no one else does. Marimekko and, and Finner, they both have a very long history. Finner is one of the oldest airlines in the world, but they are far from being old fashioned. They are very modern, they are very genuine, and uh, they are both rapidly growing in the Asian market. So there are many things that we share. And Marimekko actually is a really great add to all this uh, with its long history and wonderful designs and everything. So it's, it's uh, really completing the service design. The first thing when you design something to do the aircraft uh, interior to the cabin is the weight. So everything has to be as light as possible. And the second thing is the space limitations. You have to fit everything in very small space. The collaboration with uh, Marimekko is it's completing a lot of things. It's, it's a fantastic uh, thing and, and brings spark to, to, I think, everything we do. Yeah, and it takes, takes the design concept to a next level. One of the most important things is that the passenger feels that someone has really thought about him or her in every detail of design. Thank you very much. Uh, what does it feel like when you see an airplane with your, your work all over it? Uh, yeah, in the beginning it was, I have to say, it was a bit weird <laughs> to go there inside of the plane. It took a while before I was able to do it since the first flight that they did to Shanghai last autumn. I couldn't be there because I was building an exhibition there at the same time and I knew that the launch will be in there. So after half a year, I was able to finally um, go to that plane. And it, of course, it felt like a dream come true because it was there, everything that I wanted, exactly like I wanted it to be. Are there um, unique challenges associated with designing for a company that has such an iconic aesthetic? Uh, for me, it hasn't been somehow... I have been working so long time in Marimekko that I, I think that it's a challenge for me to find my own style inside of the house somehow. If you know what I mean, like, uh, I haven't uh, felt that it's... Uh, I haven't felt any pressure or anything, but uh, somehow I feel that my own design should uh, talk about same language than Marimekko. So I'm so used to that nowadays since I've been working so long time there. So do you have, can you separate your 
maybe design work that you do independently on the weekends from Mary Mecco, or are they very much? Yeah, absolutely. Together? There are two different sides. Uh, in my own home, there is not that much Mary Mecco because uh, since I'm working every single day with prints and colors, I want to keep my own home quite simple as a background for the ideas. Uh, and when I'm doing my own design work or unique projects, uh, I think that my style then is even more simple. I'm not using that much prints or colors or anything. It's just pure white things, w really simple and uh, yeah. So then how do, you, um, how do you convince people to incorporate color into their own homes if they're used to living with a very monochromatic look? Uh, yeah, it's a good question because uh, sometimes I'm helping also when we are doing the factory shows for people when they're coming and we are doing exhibitions. So I'm trying to then encourage people uh, to find their own way of using colors. It, in the beginning, it doesn't have to be what's best in Marimekko, for example, when we did this Oiva set or Oiva Syria, uh, when there are prints, I suggested people that you can buy only a few things in the beginning and try those, test if they fit to your home, then you can start collecting more. It doesn't have to be always that your whole home is filled with Marimekko, but it's a combination. Again, it's the fine line between the simple uh, and colorful thing. You, you obviously come from um, a, a long lineage of uh, Finnish design, even beyond the iconic Marimekko. Can you talk a little bit about uh, uh, tradition, uh, the lineage of Finnish design and art, um, and how, that, how you connect with that? Uh, yeah. Uh I think that in Finland, every people, since uh, we have design almost everywhere, we are really used, that, used to the thing that uh, every single family is using Arabia or Itala, uh, ceramics as well as Marimekko, textile come from Marimekko, then there are other brands. So somehow, I don't know why, but Finnish homes are filled with these uh, modern classics from Finnish. Uh, golden age, times when the, when companies were really making these design projects, and uh, we have a really long history in Finland with design, and it's part of the everyday life. I don't know if it's because of the wars and the things what happened of that that country was poor and people had to work together and to make their lives more beautiful somehow. So uh, it's a natural thing, a natural thing that we have been used to. Uh, crown with, so maybe this helps you a bit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was wondering why Bunny Mekko hasn't gotten into the blue jeans market because that would seem like it would be a huge market and money maker. Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear. I was wondering why Bunny Mekko hasn't gotten into the blue jeans market because that seems like it would be a huge market for your uh, fabrics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have an answer yet for that, but I will definitely tell it to design team and let's see. You were telling me that um, this year the poppy print is celebrating its 50th yeah. birthday and that Mary Mecco is, is, doing some, is doing some projects to celebrate yeah. that. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Uh, yeah, first of all, we are uh, having a celebration of collection coming. Uh, first things are out already. And then there's later during the springtime we are celebrating the real birthday. Uh, we are having the events all around the world, and we will have this Marimekko web pages where, where there are happening many, many things. And uh, actually now when you asked, I don't remember that well. I, I tried to read the press release, but, <laughs> but I know that there are anyway many, many things happening. And the best thing is that they are happening all around the world. 
and also the internet. So if you are not able to get contact with Marimekko, otherwise in your own country, you can celebrate online then. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, just one follow-up. If you decide to get into that market, can I get a percentage? As a fellow Finn, it's so exciting when I see Marimekko around, around the city. And I just saw today that Banana Republic and Marimekko are teaming up. And I've seen Marimekko in h and H&M and Anthropology. And maybe you could speak to those partnerships a little bit? Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe you heard uh, a few days ago we launched a new collaboration with uh, Banana Republic. And uh, we have been doing uh, similar collections with uh, Converse as well. HM earlier, so uh, we are selecting really carefully the brands that we are working with. We want to work with uh, in the right way, do it in our own way, also show the, our prints in the uh, best possible way, and uh, we want to find perfect partners for these projects. And we are working really closely with the uh, companies that are doing this. So we are doing basically the thing together. It's not only that we are selling the print and they got to do what they want, but it's a really beautiful uh, collaboration with two good companies together. How do you see the connection between fashion design and product design? Uh, yeah, it's interesting questions. I think that nowadays uh, it's really thin line anymore between those. Uh, whenever you go somewhere, uh, you can see at the same time similar, similar ideas and techniques used in, uh, in fashion and in interior decoration. Yesterday we saw the Patricia Morozos talk uh, here and uh, she saw beautiful, beautiful pictures which were inspiring uh, Patricia Urgiola to make her own products. So she showed fashion and interior pictures at the same time. Uh, and I think that they are coming closer and closer and uh, in modern way, we are doing a lifestyle, so we are using the same prints, and we are showing the whole. Uh, we are somehow, we bring the, for the whole home and for the whole, whole life, these prints. And I think that the same is coming to interior design as well. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, hi there. <laughs> Uh, Finland's recognized as having one of the best education systems in the world. And I wondered if you could talk about your education uh, as a younger person, elementary, secondary school, and, and art and how that impacted on it. Your education through elementary and secondary school and how that's influenced. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, in Finland, uh, the education is a really big thing, and I think that maybe that's one of the reasons why people are working a lot in the field of design as well. And uh, in schools, we start really early already to tell people about the things that are going on, and we are learning a lot. Uh, there are really good art courses, and uh, nowadays even more and more people are having these workshops, and uh, really in really early age already, people can learn about design, art, things that will later on uh, help them with their careers if they want to go to that direction. And uh, somehow, I have been also giving lectures in some of the schools sometimes, and it's really beautiful to see the young people who are really eager to find their own way of doing things. And we are really helping them with, uh, with our school system as well all the time. If, any other questions? Well, thank you all for coming today, and thank you, Sammy, for that fantastic presentation. Thank you.